Good afternoon, everybody. <clears throat> Very happy to see you again this afternoon. Before the class, all of you chant the preliminary prayers and the chapter one, which is the great joyness or great joy, Bhumi. So during the degeneration time, during the, the busy you know, lifetime, when we recite <clears throat> all the preliminary, preliminary prayers, particularly the first chapter from the interior middle way, we can get, we can have strong imprints to realize emptiness. As I mentioned hundreds of times, at the beginning, we really need to cultivate great motivation. The motivation which is wish to be Buddha or wish to achieve the enlightened state through practicing bodhicitta with the emptiness and emptiness with the bodhicitta to benefit all sentient beings. So this, uh, the words I say, wish to achieve Buddhahood means what is our achievement? So what is our, you know, the goal wish to achieve? Therefore, the Buddhahood, the complete, the enlightened state is our always achievement. Then what is the purpose? Why we want to be Buddha? So why we wish to always wish to be Buddha? Because not, we, we just want happiness. Because we sincerely you know, wish to, sincerely wish to benefit all sentient beings. Then how we can be Buddha? How we can achieve Buddhahood? Then I said, uh, generating, you know, practicing bodhicitta with the emptiness and <clears throat> emptiness with the bodhicitta. This is, you know, how we could, how we can, we will achieve Buddhahood. That means through practice of bodhicitta with the emptiness or the wisdom with us emptiness. Practicing the wisdom is realized emptiness with the bodhicitta. So in our lifetime, if we practice these two practices, bodhicitta, the wisdom, realized emptiness, then almost our practice is very complete. Then the rest of the practice will follow after bodhicitta, the wisdom, realized emptiness. Without practicing this, the two practices, then we try to practice, you know, anything else, something else, the result cannot be that great. Then the reducing of the negative thoughts cannot be that great. If we practice the, these two methods, wisdom and methods, then the rest of the practice actually, you know, directly, indirectly include within these two practices. Therefore, at the beginning, when we recite the, the first chapter, I guess many of you, you know, already cultivate bodhicitta, which is the most important cause to be bodhisattva. Also, at the same time, you know, we have been studying emptiness for quite a long time. At the same time, I hope you're able to reflect on emptiness. So therefore, if somebody asks, as a Mahayan Buddhist, so what is your end? So what is your achievement? We always say the complete Buddhahood is my achievement. For what purpose? Yes, mainly, you know, wish 
to benefit all sentient beings. This is you know, my purpose, my reason for achieving Buddhahood. There is the, 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 if they ask the last question, you know, how you can be Buddha? Because you are very simple, you know, lay person, or you are very simple amongst none, and be amongst none. How you can achieve Buddhahood? Then our answer is always, if we practice, if I practice these two practices, which is wisdom and methods, definitely I can achieve you know, Buddhahood. The how and why. Then another answer is very simple answer. If I practice Bodhicitta, I can accumulate you know, the pure uh, like merit. All the pure merit can be caused to achieve the Rupakaya. I mean, I can have the pure embodiment or pure, you know, Buddha's form. Through practice of the wisdom, which is realized emptiness, directly we're going to uh, eliminate the ignorance. And indirectly, in, in, it's going to eliminate all the rest of the, the negative thoughts. And that means the practice is very complete. Therefore, it is so, so, so important to reflect, think about emptiness. Therefore, in the past, I said, we just use a simple thing like flower, and you just watch it, how the flower is arise. The first answer, very simple, everybody say, yes, the flower is developed, <coughs> arise due to the seeds and soil, in all the conditions, the flower arise. This is the very, you know, simple answer how the flower is really developed, grow, how the fruits and flower is here growing. Then still ask the second, the second important question, then how the things really be, how the things be a flower, how the things to be, you know, non-flower, how the things to be cup and cars, how things are not to be car and house. Then the second answer is not easy to answer, also not easy to understand. So we really try to understand the second, we try to get the second, you know, answer, which is thing exist, you know, establish to be there, merely designate, you know, designated based on a certain, you know, condition. This means it looks like we are just somebody watching, you know, a, a, you know, horrible movie, or simply we just watching a beautiful movie. The horrible movie, the scary movie, and the beautiful movie, both of them equally be equal as a, a you know, project from the projector. But conventionally, never we can say this is a horrible movie, this is a beautiful movie. When you analyze both of them together, then for we could realize both of them, the conventional level, in you know, Erasmus causal condition, ultimate level, both of them not exist inherently. Therefore, so you know we need to reflect on emptiness using a certain thing. So, so when we study emptiness, the two types of negation is always you can see many you know dharma books, the negation, the two types of uh, negation. So last time somebody asked why it is so important have to know, to have the knowledge about the, the two types of negation, why it's so important. If you don't understand the exact you know, the definition of meaning of the two types of negation, then we're not going to understand, you know, do we really uh, understand emptiness or not? Do we, you know, have been realizing 
emptiness or not, we know they're going to understand. Therefore, the two types of uh, negation is so important to fully understand. For example, first you have a doubt in, the, in a certain area, there's a ghost. You have a doubt. Not only doubt, you really believe there's a ghost in one particular place. Then you just walk around in outside of the house. So you cannot see the ghost in, in around the house. That means you have a the doubt, the doubt become little you know, light. But still you have a doubt. Maybe the ghost, the ghost inside the room. So when you walk in the house, inside the house, you walk around for many, many times with a bright light, then you, you know that you cannot find, you cannot see the ghost in the house. Then finally you feel very relieved, relief. So it's the same thing when we look at the phenomena, any phenomena for us, each of the phenomena has kind of been a very unique uh, uh, criteria to be a cup, to be a car, you believe. They must have a very unique, you know, kind of characteristic to be, you know, certain things. That means you, that means you still, you know, uh, because of clinging on the self existent, truly existent, inherent existent. Then, if you believe, yeah, things that exist inherently, ultimately, then you will have uh, four possibilities. If you believe, if you think, you know, you know all the phenomena somehow you know, exist, you know, inherently, ultimately, uh, uh, safely, then we got only two options. That means things must be arise from self, or other option must be arise from other, or must be arise from both, must be arise from you know, no cost or costless. Then how if thing exists inherently, how thing must be arise from self arising, arise self. I mean, that means thing. If you know, just in case things exist inherently, the things always there as an independent phenomena. All the things, the internal and external phenomena, always be as an independent phenomena, then they're still growing, they're still arising. That means arising is set, it doesn't depend on any cause and condition. Therefore, we have to accept in one of the four extremes, you know, arising from self, it is impossible. For example, you know, your face cannot touch your face. You know, somebody else's face can touch to you. You, you cannot you know, touch your own face. The face cannot touch to your own face. Everything can never be, you know, impossible to arise itself. Therefore, there's no self arising. The second option, if the things exist inherently, intrinsically, then maybe it must be arise from other. Other, you, you, because you accept arising, you, you accept existence, then there must be arising from other. Then last time somebody asked, you know, what does mean other? Other doesn't mean that cause and effect is just distinct, be a distinct. This means inherently existent cause produce the inherently existent effect. Inherently existent effect or, or, or fruits must be arise from yeah, intrinsically existent cause. Also, it is impossible. Causeless impossible. Uh, 
and, and also arising from both is impossible. So this means not arising from self, not arising from other, not arising from both, not arising from you know, costless. And another way we can say, you know, empty of self arising, empty of arising from other, empty of arising from both, empty of arising from costless are not actually, you know, like emptiness. When we refute, when we are able to refute, refute the, the four extreme, that means Indra is saying there's not you know arising from the four extremes, that means things are not really arising from intrinsic existence. So it is so important to understand, to know uh, the meaning of the two kinds of negation. So today we just go directly, you know, the topic, the subject about the two kinds of the negation. So page number one nine five. As for the reason why, although one accept the thesis, the proofs such as, as this, one does not become a uh, Savantika Madhimaka. I have explained this extensively elsewhere. So in the Sanskrit, they say Savantika. Savantika means, you know, inherently existent in you know, the logics and reason. So the person who accept uh, the inherently inherently existent you know proof and reasoning then we can name the person follow the uh, Satantika Madhimaka. Therefore here Lama Soga explain if you accept in thesis and reasoning and logic it doesn't mean you can be Pasangika, so you can be Sautantika. So the, the person who accept, you know, inherent existing thesis and logics and reasoning, and we can say the person be a Sautantika proponent. As, uh, then how then are there true forms of negation defined? So, you know, how we can define, how we can really establish uh, the two kinds of uh, negation defined. In general, negation is cognized by our mind on the basis of explicity, explicit elimination of relevant object of negation. So first, you read this, you know, the three lines very slowly. Okay, once more. How then are the true forms of negation defined? In general, the negation is cognized or relies, cognized by the mind. So the mind must cognize the negation. How to cognize? Mean on the on the uh, on the basis of explicit explicit elimination of relevant object of negation. So whatever need whatever cognize. They have to cognize through refuting or elimination of the relevant object of negation.
So the determination of something is not being that which is not self, was not being unknown, was, is not in the in self negation. On the other hand, we find term like ultimate nature, ultimate truth, which is does not explicitly negate any opposite, opposite on the linguistic level. Yet when there are different appear to the a mind, they do so in the aspect of eliminating conceptual elaboration, such as terms and therefore terms of negation. So then now we need to think, you know, like a, so when we think about the two types of negation, sometimes we can see the negation, you know, uh, negate, the negation negate in the words. Simple, you can see the word, the negation, you negate it. But when it's ultimate emptiness, the words which is uh, uh, express the emptiness, emptiness, the words doesn't have any kind of words within the you know, uh, emptiness, the emptiness within the words. It doesn't have any very very particular words, which is negate the negation. Negation still the emptiness is you know implicative the negation. Therefore, he is clear and doing some clear clarification. So the determination of something as not being that which is not self. A was not being a known was. A was not being a known was. Is not it itself as a negation. On the other hand, we find terms like an ultimate nature, ultimate truth, which do not explicitly, explicitly negate any opposite on the linguistic level. Yet, when their reference appear to the mind, they do so in the aspect of elimination, eliminating conceptual elaboration, such as terms are, therefore terms of the negation, negation. But it's not, you know, easily you can understand, not easily you can understand, Simply, everybody say there are two types of negation. Two types of negation, right? So then what are the two types of negation? In the first one you already uh, studied in the past, non implicated negation, non implicative negation and implicative negation, non applicative negation and applicative negation. So sometimes the words that negate the negation, for example, not, you know, for example, was not arising from, not arising to, from the intrinsically existing mean the intrinsically arising phenomena is negated by the sentence, negated by the words. But when we hear the emptiness, ultimate truth, the words which is you know express the ultimate truth, emptiness, it doesn't refute, you know, does, doesn't negate the negation in the form of the words. But when you realize emptiness, so when you realize an you know, ultimate, when you realize a selflessness, then the negation is you know, already negate 
by the thoughts, not by the words. Words and emptiness, ultimate truth. The word doesn't have any other part of the word which is mentioned, which is expressed in the negative the negation. But no matter, you know, no need to worry. So when you meditate on emptiness, the word doesn't and negate the negation, negate the negation, still when the emptiness realized by the thoughts, the thoughts can negate the negation. Now is second verse become more clear with the analogy. Negation is of the two kinds of the two, of the two, non implicative negation does not simply or in affirm any other fact following the explicit elimination of its object of negation. So please remember this sentence, negation is of two kinds, of the two, what are the two non implicative negation? Number one, what does it mean? Is mean that non applicative, applicative negation does not simply or affirm any other effect following the explicit elimination. Does mean they eliminate the negation? then it doesn't have any other, you know, other, you know, hidden meaning. Explicit elimination of the relevant object of negation. So the determination of something as not being that which is not itself was or not being known was, so it read it on the object of negation. For example, when us, now the example, what is the, what is look like the, uh, the non implicative negation? First they give you little kind of, you know, definition, the meaning of the non implicative negation. So what is the definition? What is the meaning exactly? Mean here, Non, non implicative negation does not in, in, does not imply imply or form affirms affirms any other fact following the explicit elimination of the object of negation. For example, when us so when we ask to someone. Us are Brahmins, he said, one of the Indian like uh, tribes. Brahman. Are Brahman allow a drink alcohol? That, this is the question. Are Brahman allowed to drink alcohol? This is the question. Then the response, the answers is they do not drink alcohol. Right? Simply, if somebody asks, is the Brahma drink alcohol? You say, no, the Brahma doesn't drink alcohol. They do not drink alcohol. It's a simple rejection of the drinking of alcohol, right? He, he or she is not, not drinking, they don't drink alcohol, I mean, simply they eliminate, eliminate or refute or negate the drinking alcohol. Of the two non applicative negation does not imply or affirm any other fact. Proving the explicit elimination of 
is object of negation. For example, when asked, are Brahmas allowed to drink alcohol? Then the, the, the response, the response, response, they do not drink alcohol. The words which is expressed, you know, do not drink alcohol, not dictating alcohol, is a simply reject. What reject? Reject of the drinking alcohol. And simply refute, reject drinking alcohol. Therefore, it's become the uh, non implicated negation. Because simply they just say he or she is not taking alcohol. Therefore, they eliminate the negative taking alcohol. They do not drink alcohol. It's a simple rejection of the drinking of alcohol. The statement, which is the Brahmas allowed to drink alcohol, the response is do not, they, they do not drink alcohol. The statement do not affirm in a way, in a, any way that they do not, any way, any way that they do or do not drink other, you know, beverage. So when, when, you, when somebody say the Brahma is not taking alcohol, mean the words, the person was, which is say the Brahma not taking alcohol, the words simply reject the taking alcohol, taking alcohol. After reject, rejecting of, you know, the drinking alcohol, then it is never saying the person is drinking coffee or juice, simply negate the drinking alcohol. Therefore the statement do not affirm any way they, they do not drink other beverage. Conversely, any implicated negation, now the second one, the first one, uh, non implicated negation, the second one, implicated negation. This means in place or affirm other fact flowing the mind, elimination of its object of negation. For example, when wishing to uh, demonstrate, demonstrate that one of the two individuals belong to the common case of one one answer the statement, he is not a Brahma. This do not merely negate the person being a being as a Brahma, while the negative statement is also a form. The person belongs to the caste. To the caste. Other than the of, other than that of the Brahma, mainly consumer of the caste. So, if, you know the word which is said, the Brahma is not taking alcohol. These are the words. The words eliminate the negation, which is taking alcohol or drinking, drinking alcohol is the negation. The words say the Brahma are not allowed to drink alcohol. The words reject, refute the negation, which is taking alcohol is the negation. So when the words, you know, have the expression, the Brahma is not taking any alcohol, it doesn't have any you know, kind of indication 
or indirect saying that Brahma is you know, taking other things like a juice, like a coffee. Therefore, here, conversely, implicative negation impels or affirms other fact following the mind's elimination of the object of negation. For example, when wishing to dom uh, demon demonstrate that one of the true individual belongs to the a common caste, he one utter the statement, he is not a Brahma. This does not merely negate the person being a Brahma, while a neg negative statement is also affirm, affirm and, you know, or affirm or uh, indirectly express the person belongs to the caste other than of the Brahmas, merely uh, the commoner's caste. Second is the, you know, the non, uh, you know, so implicative, impl implicative negation. Now, for example, there's two persons coming. One is, uh, you know, two person among the two, one must be a, like a, a prince or princess, uh, I think prince. One is, you know, like Brahma. Two are coming. Either the two, one is Brahma, one is the, uh, you know, prince. We never know which one is the prince, which one is the Brahma. If somebody say, oh, on the left side of the something is a Brahma, then indirectly the words eliminate, so the indicate the person is a Brahma, indirectly is saying this person is a uh, prince because there's only you know, two person, one is you know prince, other must be Brahma. If other one is a Brahma, then the other one must be a prince. Then this, this word says a you know imply impulse. Therefore, he called implicative negation. For example, when wishing to demonstrate that one of the true individual belongs to the commons, uh, commoners caste, in one utter the statement, he is not a Brahma. This does not merely negate the person being a Brahma, while a negative statement is also affirmed that the person belongs to the case other than the Brahma, merely a uh, commoner's caste. There are three ways such as, as a, so there's a now, first have to be very clear, the two kinds of, two kinds of negation, uh, implicated and the non-implicated. The non-implicated negation never affirm other things, any other things, simply they eliminate or simply they refute, simply they negate the negation. It doesn't have any you know, other impulse. Then the, the implicative, implicative negation impulse, impulse or affirms of other effect following the mind, mind's elimination of this object of the negation. For example, when wishing to determine, sorry, domin, uh, domestic, that one of the two individual belongs to the, the commoner's case, he one a third, the statement, he is a, not a Brahma, this do not merely negate the person being a Brahma, while the negative statement is also affirmed that the person belongs to the case, case other than the Brahma, merely a communist case. 
So I know it is not really easy, not, not easy to understand the meaning. That means simply, I give you a kind of a simple example. Usually we can see when we realize something, at the same time also we realize other thing. Sunday we realize only one thing, after that there's no way we can realize something else. Therefore, when we say that the, the things are totally empty or inherently existent, that the words express, says, all phenomena totally empty of inherently existent, this kind of statement. This statement eliminate or refute or negate the negation, which is, you know, ultimate existence. Negate. The words refute or negate uh, the negation, which is ultimate existence. Simply just refute, negate. There's, it doesn't have any, you know, impulse. Impulse. A second example here, among the two, one must be Brahma, one is, one is the, there's a common person. If somebody, you know, pick point, ping point the actual Brahma, say, oh, he's a Brahma, then the words which express, say this is a Brahma, then indirectly is, you know, express other one is a, you know, just simple ordinary person. Merely a uh, common caste. There are three ways, such as other fact, many may be impelled. So there's a three different way to impel. There are three ways, such as other fact, may be impelled by a, negate, a negative statement. So the negative negative statement mean some there's some they, uh, they negate something or they refuse some therefore the negative statement. There there are three ways such as other fact may be impelled by a negative statement through the direct impl impl uh, direct implication indirect implication and context, uh, contextual implications. There are three ways such as other fact may be impelled by negative statement. So what are the three you know, ways such as the fact may be impelled? Then here, through direct uh, implication, indirect implication, and the contextual implication. First is, is like the statement, say, no self-existent. No self-existent is a statement. It's a negative statement. This is the negative statement negate the self arising, you know, self existent, whereby the elimination of the object of negation and affirmation of the other fact are both affected with the single declaration. That means now you can remember the three types of, three ways to impulse, directly, indirectly, then the contextual on, uh, contextual implication. The second is <coughs> the second one is the choosing sambo. That means the dharma data is a name of the you know I think one of the person. Then mean you know the stud I mean like a fatty you know looks very fat. When we say the Fedi, you know, Dharma data, 
does not eat during the day. This is also a statement. Also is a the negative statement. The statement negate the dharma that the data eats during the day. So thus the statement is very easy, is very obvious. Yeah, he's not eating during the day. Definitely he's eating during the day because he's a you know stopped, he's a very fatty. Day, where another fact is impelled indirectly, these two respectively give in a specific example of the impelling another fact directly or indirectly. An example now there's a you know there's another statement can impulse and something else directly indirectly. Now it's impulse both directly and indirectly is a statement, the same one, you know, the Dharma Dhatra who does not eat during the day is not, you know, uh, skinny, skinny. Dharma, uh, so the statement is Dharma Dhatra who does not eat during the day is not skinny. They eat not skinny. They impulse something else directly, indirectly. Indirectly, it, it is an impulse, you know, eating during the day, so during the night. And also, Geshila, yes, someone raised hand. Mm -hmm. Do you want to uh, do you want to take that call? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Gisela, you raise your hand. Would you want to unmute yourself and ask your question? Yes, please. Uh, why, Zach, you raised your hand just now. Is there something that you want to clarify with Geshila? <laughs> uh, he raised hand, maybe she raised okay. hand by mistake. Yeah, no mistake. Maybe she's doing some good exercise. <laughs> okay. So these pages, I think we have to go, you know, in a few time. So one time definitely no good understand. So today we just put a foundation. So we, we lay down the foundation. So next time we do, we talk more. Then the third time, you know, the definitely everybody has a, some kind of understanding about the, the two types of negation. The third type is like the statement, he is not a Brahma. Brahma. When he start, started in a context where he is not a, not yet been determined whether the person is of the royal or Brahma. That means it's context. Means there's a two persons coming. So we know one is a Brahma, one is the royal kind of person. But we don't know which one is a Brahma, one is the royal person, right? We have a doubt. Then somebody said, oh, on the left side, is a Brahma, then definitely we, we go to, you know, related to the context that we know other one is a, the royal, from the royal family. All, also another way we can say on the right side is the person from the royal, royal person, then indirectly, you know, implicate other is a Brahma. So how we, you know, determine this Brahma is related to the context because there's only two person. We know one is king, we call a royal, one is a Brahma. So he's a royal, other must be Brahma. He's a Brahma, other must be a royal. It's the third. Here the statement, what case is he is, 
not an explicit met is context uh, cited as an explanation of the commentary of the lamb of the wisdom. Then there's a quotation uh, from the a commentary on the lamb of the wisdom says, negation that reveals by the implication that which affirm by the meaning of one words, and that which is does both, but does not express the word itself. They are implicative negation, other are different. So there's a two types of uh, negation. Then now you hear, the, so it's a very rough idea. So we, I, I can, I, I could explain. Now we link, you know, uh, what is the link? You know, underst uh, understanding the two types of negation and the emptiness. So what is the, you know, uh, related, you know, connection? Because, you know, in the past we are talking about emptiness, that certainly has come into, you know, explain the two types of negation. So what is the link? Then remember, if somebody say, are you, do you drink alcohol? The person said, no, I'm not taking alcohol. <clears throat> this is a statement. So the, the statement which it says, not taking alcohol is the negative statement. Mean this statement, you know, eliminate, refute, negate, the negation, which is taking alcohol is the negation, you know, uh, according to this statement. And the person said, I'm not taking alcohol, simply the negate taking alcohol, it doesn't have any implicit other meaning. It doesn't say, I'm not taking alcohol, but I take, you know, tea and coffee. It doesn't say anything. Simply, merely refute, you know, taking alcohol. This is a, you know, analogy or example. Same way, so, so when we say this is, there's no, you know, none of the phenomena arising safely. None of the phenomena exist inherently. It's a statement. The statement which is expressed, it, you know, things not arising inherently. The statement is also is a negative statement. The statement negate, refute, or eliminate the negation, which is inherently existent, which is you know, self-existent, existent safely. The statement simply only negate or only refute, only eliminate the negation, it doesn't have any other, you know, in, <coughs> uh, implicit meaning in the words. Then when we meditate on emptiness, you know, you just, uh, you just focus on our object, then you use certain, you know, few important logics. Through the logic, you evolve to refute be able to negate the negation which is the inherent existence. So when you just refute, you know, inherent existence, your mind just catch up the, you know, empty of inherent existence. Or just catch up, just hold the elimination of, you know, self-arising, elimination of inherent existence. I mean, just simply look like your mind is totally hang up. I mean, just simply you just absorb the empty of inherent existence. The mind doesn't have any other kind of, you know, uh, uh, realization. Simply reject. So the, the more you meditate on the emptiness, not arising from self, not arising, sorry, 
not arising from not arising inherently then slowly you can your mind can only realize emptiness not any other any not any anything else yes. while you are meditating on emptiness your mind is still uh, you know holding something else that mean your your dot is not clear there's a ghost nemdi 99% show there's no ghost still there's a 1% dot is there but if there's a 1% dot is there still you feel have a sense of scary you have a scary feeling because you have a little doubt so when when you have a the, the doubt becomes zero that means your mind is totally free from the scary likewise when we meditate on emptiness your mind just merely simply catch on the empty of inherent existence not nothing else if your mind you know has a little bit other realization mean you not able to refute the truly existent in her existent mean your mind still grabs the you know the negation if your mind is little you have a little you know grasping on the truly existent then attachment anger hatred jealousy must be there is a chance to arise therefore you your mind must be totally free from the doubt of there's a boss likewise in your mind you your mind have to be totally free from you know the uh, inherent existent you know existent safely ultimately existent not 80% not 90% not 99% 100% mean your doubt your grasping reach to the zero to grasp the truly existent then there's no any basis to arise attachment anger ego nothing there's no look like you know you are you are, you are somebody cost you in the house the house is a so many different kinds of you know imagination so when when you are you look at our own you feel scared scared through analyzing when you realize there's no such a thing there everything is just imagination by myself or somebody put lot of imagination in my mind right so this is not easy so i need to check the time ah, so what is what time sonam uh it's four o'clock in singapore we still have half an hour yeah uh yes i know you have a half an hour i don't have uh, no sorry gishila sorry it's four o'clock in singapore now Yeah, that's me is a uh, 130 uh, uh, in india 130 yeah in tadi so 2 o'clock i have a meeting mm-hmm. so this month we have a lot of exam with a uh, senior and junior so we have to set up all the schedules in the morning after the class we have a short meeting then after half hour i have a, i have a long meeting so i will <coughs> stop here so for you i really urge all of you to read you know this few pages about the two types of negation where with the patience and think about the all the example then the example you just relate with your you know self grasping how our self grasping grabs the true existence so at the end or you know our view have to reach to the zero degree there's 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 no just such as self arising there's such as there's no such inherent existence that means your mind is totally you know free from the uh, truly existent 
then it, nobody, you know, nobody can have any kind of basis to arise attachment and anger. Therefore, realizing emptiness is very important to control the rest of the negative thoughts. It's, it's probably is difficult. Somehow, we need to put in you know, a lot of effort. Okay, so we can have maybe another 10 minutes for Q&A. If there's no Q&A, then we can uh, stop here our class today. <laughs> Isila, there is one question. Uh, uh, there's, there's one question about the two negation. The mm -hmm. second example. So, uh, Gishila, when you say non-indicative um, negation, the example is there is two person. One is common, commoner. The other one is uh, Brahmin. Mm -hmm. So, when when someone point to the person in the left, say this person is not Brahmin. So, at this moment, uh, it negate that this person being uh, Brahmin. At the same time, it indicates that the other person is commoner. So yeah. this is called indicative negation. Yeah, yeah. Is it correct understanding? It's, quite, it's very correct because they negate something, then indirectly, you know, indicate some, you know, something else. It's a, it's quite very correct, very correct. So this, you, you have a good understanding based on the example. Now you need to bring the idea on the you know, ultimate level, the negate the negation, which is the inherent existence. So when we negate the inherent existence, the minds only, you know, just catch up only the empty of inherent existence, nothing else. Here we say, this person is, you know, the Brahman, then indirectly indicate other person is a, the commonary person. Right? This man has a true kind of object. Directly, the man realized this is a Brahma. Indirectly, the man also realized the person is a commonary one. So emptiness has a, only just one single object to absorb. It doesn't have any you know, indicated phenomena to indicate. Is correct. Any question? Uh, sorry, Gishila, this person says a correction. When we say uh, Mr. A is not Brahmin, mm. so we negate Mr. A being Brahmin at the same time saying that Mr. A is commoner. Not the other person, right? We talk. Yeah, yeah. There's two person, A and B. One is Brahmin, the other is commoner. When we say A is not Brahmin, we negate that A being a Brahmin. At the same time, we're saying A is commoner. Commoner, yeah. So we do not talk about B at all, right? No, no, no. Yeah, therefore, this is a clear. You mentioned the con uh, was context. What do you call it here? Con some of the context, huh? Is, is there's a word which mentioned. Uh, there, are, there are three ways such as other fact may be impelled, right? Implicate, implicate. This is the third one, contextual. Contextual implic implication related to the context. If there is a two person, you know, just simple two persons come in. When we say A is a Brahman, then we how we know other is a commonary one, common, commonal, commonal one. So we actually we know there's only two persons, one, one is Brahma, one is the a common person. Then we know related to related to the context. If one if A is Mr. the A is a Brahman, the must B must be a common one. Also, in the even though the A is a not Brahman, that means saying 
you know, the other one is a Brahman. So this is important, you must remember, they say the third, uh, the three ways, and then uh, the third one is the contextual implication. So you need to understand the contextual implication, otherwise very correct. Okay, I don't think then uh, there's any questions. <coughs> Start here. Also, next Sunday we can have a class. So the topic also is the same. You know, two types of negation, the three ways of implications. Okay, so thank you so much for attending the class. The today class is just for one hour. The next Sunday, I think maybe more, little bit more than one hour. I see my schedule. May the merit of speaking about the excellent tradition of the Master Nagarjuna extend to the edge of the space itself. May such as marriage shine broad as a atomic star am in the mind, sky darkness by the afflictions, and the throw of the force of the having obtained merit, a resembling shining gem on the, on the spent hearts. May the entire world rely such as this and the swiftly travel to the Skada ground. Tony Dawa Rambaja Mayabana Yoja Yava Nyamba Pony Gondo Devarjo Loga Lundo Lozanyala Nagya Sona Chaji Dara Kyabja Yiga Nyama Yo Tongi Yugada. Simji to Landinga, number one, and the Kanji to Bode, and Jidam or the Yeton. Your do this, Sandu. Okay, everybody, thank you so much. Have a happy Sunday.